Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and this is part three of our three-part series on the Synology Disk Station, and specifically its Surveillance Station software. In part one, I told you what that software is. In part two, I showed you how to set it up. And in this edition, we're going to be looking at setting up motion events, notifications, as well as recording scheduling times as well. Some more advanced things happening in this video. Now, this is a paid sponsorship from Synology. They will be reviewing this content before it is posted, and they have also suggested things that we cover here in this video. All right, so we're going to go back over to our surveillance station app and we're going to click back on the IP camera option. That is the same thing we did when we first configured the cameras, but uh, now that they are configured, we can go in and work on the motion detection. So you can see I've got the front door selected and down at the bottom here we have applications and I'm going to click on the event detection application. And what we're going to be presented with is a live view of the camera as well as some options for setting things up. Now, the first thing to look at here is the detection source. Now what you can do is you can have the camera's own internal software uh, decide when a motion event occurs or you can have surveillance station manage it through the NAS device. And my uh, opinion is the surveillance station uh, motion detection is probably going to be better than the camera you likely have uh, connected. So we're going to have uh, by surveillance station be what we go from here. Now, one of the problems we have here is that I've got the road right next to my driveway and there will be cars like there uh, coming up and down all day long, which might set off a motion event. Also, I share my driveway with a few neighbors and they, they are coming and going uh, throughout the course of the day and I don't want to uh, be notified every time somebody comes in the driveway, but I do want to know when people come up and down the walkway and that is where uh, editing the detection area here is important. So I'm going to click on uh, edit now and uh, what we can see here is uh, a big blue screen up right now and that means that any change that occurs, like my neighbor here walking their dog on the driveway is going to uh, set off a motion event and I need to get a lot more specific than that. So what I'm going to do here is click on the erase button and now you can see there's no blue on here at all but we do have a pretty big grid area and I'm just going to go and make sure this plus icon is selected here and I'm just going to draw a, a section of the screen here so that anytime uh, somebody comes in this area uh, we will get a notification but I won't get notified with my neighbor walking back there I won't get notified when a car drives by or even if a car pulls into the driveway only when somebody crosses this area will the motion zone uh, be triggered and I can get a notification about that. Maybe I'll just add that portion in as well. Now remember in our first video we set up recording to continuously record. So even though uh, we may not detect motion, I should be able to see uh, what happens in those areas uh, during the course of the day. So for example, if I got a notification uh, on the, uh, the time when somebody walks in front of my walkway here, I can then rewind and see when that person pulled in the driveway. So these uh, really do give you a good index as to when you should start looking through your recorded archive for events that occurred. So I'm going to click on save now and we're going to commit that in there and now anytime something happens within that area we will get a notification of it. And if you're finding you're getting a lot of false notifications you can make some adjustments to the sensitivity and threshold here on the front screen and basically the lower the number the less likely you're going to see a notification come across. So you can turn the sensitivity down, uh, you can also adjust the threshold which is how much motion it needs to see in between frames before it fires off something to you. This will be something you have to tweak until you get it just right and unfortunately every situation is different and every camera is different so it's hard to make a blanket recommendation but if you are getting a lot of false notifications this is where you'll make that change. Now there might be times during the day where you don't want the camera to record or notify you of motion events and there is a scheduling option for that and we're going to do that with my living room camera because I don't want it to record everything going on inside of my house when I'm home and uh, we can decide uh, times of day in which it would be appropriate for the camera to switch itself off. So what I'm going to do here is just back out of the event detection for the front door. I'm going to click on the living room camera, click on edit and what that'll do is bring us back to the configuration screen we had in the last video when we set up that living room camera. I'm going to click on record settings and go over to schedule and now I've got this big block of stuff on here uh, which looks a little daunting but it's actually pretty simple. So on the left side are days of the week and on the top are hours of the day and each of these little boxes here represents a 30 minute period. So for example uh, this little box right here is Sunday uh, between midnight and 12.30 a.m. and this is is the second portion of the midnight hour on Sunday. Now right now we have it selected to be continuously recording and also looking for motion detection events but I could decide you know what uh, between maybe 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. I don't want that camera recording anything so I clicked on delete up there 
and I'm going to then just drag my mouse from uh, 17 to 23, and that will disable recording under any circumstances. I can still view the camera live. It's still going to be transmitting data to uh, the, the NAS box here, but it will not be recording anything during that period of time. Now, what I could do, though, is decide, you know what, I do want to maybe start detecting motion around 10 p.m. Uh, to 11 p.m., but not do anything else. So if I take a, a little click on that and drag that over during those time periods, what will happen there is it will at least record a motion event that occurs, but it won't be continuously recording. So if the dog walks by, it'll get the dog walking by, but I won't have anything else recorded. It's only going to pick up things uh, that result in motion detection. So with all this motion detection going on, we probably want some way to know when it happens, and there are a number of ways to get notified. Uh, so we're going to go to the main menu here in the upper left-hand corner and click on notification. And when I do that, I'm going to get this screen here, which has a whole bunch of different ways that I can be notified. So we have the uh, simplest one, of course, which is email, and that will work with my own email server or with Gmail or other providers here. So you don't have to send anything to Synology if you don't want to. If you are running your own SMTP server, you can have it uh, send it through your own personal server that you have set up as well. So again, a, a good way to keep everything uh, confined to your own servers. It'll also send a snapshot of the event uh, if you wish for it to do so as well. And you can also limit how often it sends things. So if you have a whole bunch of motion going on, you can say, all right, send me one notification and then uh, wait five or 10 minutes to send me the next one so that you don't get inundated with 12,000 emails every time uh, somebody walks by your uh, front door. You have an option for sending text messages if you have a SMS provider set up push service works through the uh, Android and iOS push notification system. So if you have the uh, DS Cam app installed on your phone, we previewed that app in the first video, uh, you can use the push notification system that's built into those two platforms to send you a notification when the motion event occurs. If you tap on the notification, it pulls up the camera app and you can see uh, in real time what is going on. Uh, in this option here, they also have the ability to send email uh, through Synology's email server. Both of these options do go through Synology Synology, so there is something being transmitted from the box to Synology servers. In the case of the mobile push notification, there's no image being sent, but you can uh, have Synology's email server send you a snapshot of what was going on, just like the email option up here if you choose to do that. The settings screen allows you to de determine what notifies you and how. So, uh, for example, with my uh, current set system set up here, I only have uh, mobile uh, push notifications occurring for motion, but I could decide, you know what, if my uh, recording fails, I might want to know about that as well. So I can uh, check off uh, how I want to be notified. And again, we've got email, SMS, and mobile, and I can determine which notifications go where and how, which is pretty nice to see. And we also have the ability to set up some uh, settings for scheduling here also. So if I go over here to edit under edit schedule, uh, we'll see an option very similar to what we had uh, with the recording thing in the other screen there a second ago. So what I could do is decide, you know what, uh, between the hours of 6 a.m. and 5 p.m., because we have so many people coming to the door, I don't want to be notified every time somebody shows up at the door, so we can uh, turn those off. Now, that does not mean your motion detection events don't happen, which is great. So all those uh, motion events will still be showing up in your timeline, but and the recordings will be happening, but you won't get notified of them. So that's really what you're stopping here is just the notifications. So if you don't want uh, to be notified when things are happening frequently, but still want those things recorded as events on your timeline, uh, you can do that by disabling those uh, those notifications here. So lots of cool stuff for uh, getting your notifications set up and a lot of flexibility as to how you can get it done as well. Now I wanted to run a scenario by you that is probably a common thing for homeowners, unfortunately, which is uh, when boxes get stolen from your front porch. So I've got uh, a box here that was delivered and it's sitting on my front porch. It was there at uh, 1.20 p.m., but if I go just uh, shy of two o'clock, it's gone. And I don't have a motion event that detected that going on there. So uh, clearly somebody got in and took that box outside of my motion detection zone or for whatever reason it just didn't pick up the motion. But we have a continuous recording on here because it records all the time. So what we can do is actually analyze the video for uh, that specific motion event, which is that box disappearing, uh, with something called Smart Search. So I have the, uh, the timeline here at about 1.18 p.m. I'm going to go over to Smart Search, and what that will do uh, is pull up a secondary window uh, starting right at that 1.18 p.m. Uh, time period. And what I'm going to do is go over to Configure, and uh, now we've got a lot more options available to us, including Missing Objects. I'm going to click on Missing Object here, 
And what I'm going to do, just like we did in our motion zones earlier, uh, is draw a box around the box. And now we've got this little blue area here. And uh, what I can do now is just click on uh, the play button. And what it's going to do is just start playing the video back. I can walk away from it. And then uh, when it's done, I will get a result. So I've already done one of these searches here. And uh, it found when that box disappeared. So if I click on the uh, missing object search result here, you can see it'll pull up another video window here. And uh, you'll see the box there. And then all of a sudden, and here I come in from the front door and I stole my own box. And I was outside of the motion detection zone that I had set because I came out through the front door, but I was able to do all of that analysis of the footage that was stored on here uh, to do a very quick search and find exactly when that box was taken. And the best part is, is that that snippet that it came up with, I can download and then send to uh, law enforcement right away. So a very efficient way of getting through a lot of footage uh, when something happens and you can then very quickly get that footage out to the necessary authorities to begin looking for the perpetrators who take things from your front porch. So very cool stuff that is built into these Synology disk stations. Again, this is available on just about every one of their Synology NAS drives. It works with uh, 5,000 different cameras and you can have two connected to this at any given time. And then of course you can buy additional licenses to add more cameras to the mix. And it's still available to do other NAS functions on your network as well. So very useful stuff and really cool that you can get started with this for free as part of your Synology NAS purchase. So that's going to do it for our surveillance station series. Hope you found it helpful. Leave some comments down in the comment stream below and we'll see you next time. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.